What is going on everybody? This video is going to go over the single back wide trip master himself Joel CP's running game from the Madden Challenge tournament. Now, quick shout out to Prilo Priors and Ryan Miley for the suggestions. Thanks a lot guys and definitely be sure to comment and leave more suggestions on types of videos that you would like to see in the future. So Joel's run game, as you can see, heavily depended on the single back wide trips formations, in particular the halfback stretch and the halfback dive, which both accounted for over 60% of his play calls. And then there was a third run that he mainly ran against Dubby in the first round of the single elimination matches, uh, the gun bunch tight end inside zone that Dubby had a very hard time slowing down. Uh, but this video, I'm going to go ahead and focus mainly on the stretch and that inside zone. And so first off, right here against Spoto. Now, whenever Joel came out against Spoto, uh, Spoto looked like he had a very good defense set up for uh, this halfback stretch, which Joel basically ran, I'm pretty sure, was his first like two play calls in every single game he played. Now, as you can see, Spoto chose to attack it with a dollar style defense. Looks like very balanced base line press, pinch D line. So what you're going to see from this halfback stretch out of this wide trips is that the two wide receivers on the trip side are going to be tasked with having to block you know the cornerback that's right directly across from them now what happens on this stretch is that the tackle and the guard usually will double team you know the first outside defender right there that they run into and then what will happen is the tackle will go ahead and sift up to the second level so that's what you're going to see and that's going to leave the tight end tasked with going out and blocking that strong safety what this allows Spoto to do is, as you can see, Spoto usering the backside linebacker, Spoto is going to be able to user him, scrape across, and try and plug a gap on that side, and either force Joel to have to cut it back up where there's a lot more traffic, or Spoto can try and shoot a gap and make a play on Joel himself. So what you're going to see here actually is that on the outside, Joel's wide receivers actually don't do a great job of blocking. You can actually see the outside wide receiver misses his block, which kind of muddies up Spoto being able to scrape across the outside receiver actually just goes straight it looks like he's running for that strong safety but what that means is that the outside cornerback doesn't get blocked at all he comes flying in ends up making the tackle so that's one thing that even if Joel's blockers do their assignments perfectly Spoto's the user defender is still going to be in a good position to make a play and in that case if they don't do their jobs perfectly it gets blown up in the backfield now fast forwarding to later in the game, you can see Joel has now flipped his wide trips formation to the left, trying to see if he can have a little more success running it to that side rather than to the right side. And it looks like Spoto is in essentially the same run D. It looks like dollar, baseline press, pinch D line. But what happens here is Spoto doesn't mimic his user pattern in the sense of he doesn't go with the backside linebacker. This time Spoto is still on the same linebacker as before, which is this one right here. So what you're going to see is at the snap of the ball, Joel's blockers actually do pick up their blocks this time. Spoto is now on the strong side linebacker who, as you, if you recall before, actually took up one of those blockers, which was allowing Spoto to use this backside linebacker to scrape all the way across and would have allowed him to make a play had Joel's blockers actually done their job. In this case, Joel's blockers do do their jobs. Spoto tries to shoot a gap with the strong side linebacker, but since it is the strong side linebacker, there are blockers in the area to be able to pick him up. And as you can see, Spoto's weak side linebacker, which he was using before, ends up running himself out of the play. He's, he's not anywhere even near it. He actually takes the wrong gap. He doesn't scrape outside. Imagine if Spoto were using this guy, Spoto would be out here, and he'd either take up that tight end block allowing his safety to come down and make a play on the ball, or if the tight end just passed him up, like it looks like he probably would have done since he already has his eyes set on the safety, Spoto would have been able to scrape in and try and make a play on the running back in the backfield. But because Spoto used the strong side linebacker, he gets caught up in all the blockers, and Jai gets loose, makes a juke right here, and ends up taking it 42 yards to the house for a touchdown. Now fast forward to a little later in the tournament when Joel was playing Dubby, and as you can see, second play of the game on offense for Joel, second and eight, wide trips to the left. Now Dubby looks like he came out in a 3-4 odd style defense to try and slow down this wide trips, and what you're gonna see here, hypothetically, from the halfback stretch blocking, is that you're gonna get a double team on that defensive end, so a double team right here, the tight end's going to block the outside linebacker, and then you have this inside slot receiver 
who he can either block this strong safety or he can cut off and try and block one of those two middle linebackers. Now, W style defense, as you can see, he stacked those two middle linebackers and they're going to scrape to the outside so that basically no matter who this inside slot receiver blocks, whether it's the safety or whether it's one of the two middle linebackers, that's three defenders. If he picks one, you still have two other defenders who are going to be scraping to the outside and are going to have a shot at making a play on the ball, considering even the fact that Dubby is using one of those two middle linebackers. So uh, what you're going to see whenever Joel runs this play is he's going to stretch it out. You see the double team happen on uh, that defensive end. Tight end blocks the outside linebacker. You see the two scraping middle linebackers. Now, the read for Joel here probably would have been to just immediately cut this up uh, behind number 72 right there. Uh, since both of those middle linebackers, you can see in particular Dubby's user, they're over pursuing to the outside really, really hard. So if if Joel would have cut it up, he probably would have had a lot of real estate to work with there, considering not only did he have number 72 in the gap, but he also had his receiver who ended up blocking nobody. Uh, he's going to the like third level and searching out. I think he's going to go ahead and just run at the strong safety. But um, as you see, Dubby's middle linebackers do a great job of scraping outside. Uh, Joel's cornerback gets off the block by DeAndre Hopkins and gets met by three defenders and ends up picking up one yard. So Dubby's 3-4 odd defense looks like it definitely has the outside containment, but you do have to be careful about getting you know cut up on in the middle of the field whenever all of your linebackers are scraping to the outside, such as in that play. Now getting into the second quarter, obviously Joel's a very experienced runner. He knows what defensive fronts he can run the single back wide trips HB stretch against and which ones have a hard time shutting it down. So in this case, W was doing a great job of shutting down that stretch. So Joel says, okay, time for plan B. He goes to gun bunch inside zone, or gun bunch tight end rather, inside zone. And basically an inside zone compared to a stretch, you're going to get essentially no double teams. It's all going to be one-on-one -on -one blocks. So in this case, double teaming this defensive front wasn't very advantageous for the offense. So now you're going to get a bunch of one-on-one. -on -one. So the center going to hat on a hat, hat on a hat, hat on a hat. And so now in this scenario, and this is kind of what goes back uh, to what Spoto did whenever he was trying to defend the halfback stretch after Joel flipped it, is now Dubby, you see him using this strong side linebacker. So what you're going to see is Joel's got the three bunch receivers. One's going to block the outside corner. He's going to go for the strong safety, or the free safety rather. And then this inside slot, he's going to end up blocking Dubby. So who's the first defender, hypothetically, if all of Joel's blockers hold their blocks that can actually make a play on the ball it's either this weak side middle linebacker who looks like he's walking up really far so he's probably going to get caught in the shuffle or it's the all of a sudden the backside strong safety who's got to run all the way across the formation to try and make a play and by that time Ajay is going to have picked up you know 20 yards so it's just poor user choice I think from Dubby given the circumstance that he knows Joel is probably going to run inside zone and Joel wants to run the ball obviously first and 10 I, I don't even know I don't know the stats but I'm sure Joel probably ran the ball on 90 percent at least of his first downs throughout this tournament so uh, if Dubby had used the weak side middle linebacker he would have had a free alley because he knows you know if he's on this guy he knows he needs to scrape to the outside and stop the inside zone from happening but the computer does not know to expect the inside zone. So in this case, that's exactly what you're going to see. You're going to see a hat on a hat. That middle linebacker is so far to the front, he actually gets picked up by the right guard. Joel realizes this, goes to the left, and as you see, Joel's blockers hold their blocks. And that's a risk you take with the inside zone. Since it's a bunch of one-on-ones, You know, it can either work out really well for the offense if they hold their blocks, or you can get three guys get block shedded and get blown up in the backfield right here gets a block shed but the juke being so OP he jukes one guy and the backside strong safety who I talked about ends up coming across and making the tackle after a gain of 24 yards here so as you can see that was the adjustment Joel made throughout the game um, that 3-4 odd was doing a great job of shutting down the single back wide trips running game Joel adjusts goes to the gun bunch tight end inside zone W seemed like he wasn't really prepared for Joel to make that adjustment since he hadn't done that the entire tournament up to that point. W stayed in that 3-4 and it ended up not lining up very well with that gun bunch tight end running game. So that's going to be it for this video guys. Definitely comment like I said 
any future video ideas that you guys may want to see from me. As always, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, guys, take it easy.